Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amir. This is episode 4 of my Road to 5K PB series. Today, I'll be previewing the Singapore Athletics Interclub Championships that's taking place this Saturday and Sunday at Kalam Practice Track. And I'll also be doing a review of a shoe that has helped me loads in my preparation for this 5K race. The New Balance 5280. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, for today, I'll be previewing the 800, 1500 and the 5K races. These are the events that I feel I'm most um, capable of giving a preview to because I have raised these distance, distances and I more or less know who's competing inside and who are the big favourites and stuff like that. Yeah, so for the 800, it's taking place on Saturday, Sunday morning. There are four heats and it's taking place at 9.40am, which probably means that the weather will be burning. But overall, this looks like a very stacked 800 field across all field, uh, across all the heats. Loads of national schools, IVP, and polite medalists all across the board. So let's let's jump right into heat one. First of all, as you can see, there's uh, five runners who stand up from the rest: Haja, Ram, Impin, Nikesh, and Faisal. So these are the five fastest runners this year, and um all of whom I've raced with a lot from last season. There's also multiple time national schools medalist Nicholas Lien, though in my opinion, he probably won't make much of an impact on this race. Haja and his race experience will always um, make a difference, but Ram and Nikesh are always going to finish fast. Then of course, there's Impin and there's Faisal, both of whom are excellent racers. Faisal also just recently ran a very good 5k road race um, at Bedok Reservoir during the Polite Road Race. Yeah. Um, but based on recent performance, my money is on Nikesh or Ram. But you can never count out the others. Yeah. So now let's move on to Heat 2. So in Heat 2, we have two runners who have my eye, who I have my eye on. First of all is Hari Haran Duraraj of uh, Oldham Athletics. An old friend and also an old competitor from the track. And he is a multiple time national schools medalist and one of the fastest finishers I've ever raced against. He definitely has the pedigree to take this heat, but if anyone has anything to say about that, it might be Kai Bin of NTU. If I recall correctly, he may have a faster personal best time than Hari. And though I am unsure of the current conditions, I'm fairly certain that it'll come down to these two. Okay, now let's move on to heat number three. Right now, in heat number 3, um, it's a bit of a toss-up. There's my old friend, Brandon Sate Thas, again. Uh, one of my old competitors from back in the national schools days. He's making his comeback after a long layoff. Then there's the Gurkha, Pravin Kumar Buhara. I raced Pravin earlier this year at the Police uh, Track and Field Championships. He ran a 207 and he's pretty fast. Then there's also Edri from Nian. I'm currently unsure of his condition right now, but I think he'll be in with a fight for this heat. A tough pick, but I think I'm going with Pravin. Yeah. Now, on to the last and final heat. We have a rather straightforward um, heat, if you ask me. Because on paper, this guy right here, Lim Yuta from NTU, he would be the favourite. A multiple time national schools medalist, and boasting a 203 personal best, there's no one in his heat who even comes close to that. Having said that, Yutsa, just like Brandon Sate from um, the previous heat, he is making his comeback after a long layoff from the spot. And in this heat, you also have the National School Steeplechase and 5000 meter cha uh, champion, um, Ruben Loganathan, from a few years ago. And we all know you can never count the champion out. But for all intents and purposes, my money would be on you, sir. Alright, now on to the 1500. Two heats of 17 on a Saturday evening. Not too bad a weather to be running a 1500 if you ask me. The quality is rather lopsided though. Let's take a look at the first heat. So on to the first heat. And as you can see, you have the fastest 1500 runners here. Everywhere you look, you'll see accomplished runners in this field. With Singapore's 2023 number 2 1500 meter runner, Haja, of course. Um, Haja, where is he? Yeah, here we go. 
Haja in lane 6, leading the pack. Keep an eye out for this year's 800m SEA Games representative, um, Sean Shia as well. He's in, hit ni he's in lane 9. Um, and also his fellow sub 2 runner, Wen Xiang. They're both representing SIT, both with a seat time of 420. And if you ask me, I fully expect them to go faster than 420 for, today, eh, for this um, race. And um, they're sandwiched by Tsing Heng, Faisal, and Nikesh. Lane 7, lane 10, and lane 12. So, they will. these are all good 800 runners, and they will surely have something to say towards the tail end of the race. You also have the recently crowned Sunik Road Race Champion, John Lim, from NUS. Um, he has a PB of 4... His seat time here says 4.29. But if you ask me, honestly, he'll definitely run somewhere around... Anywhere from 4.15 to 4.20, at least. This man has a... Uh, um, 7 minute 12 seconds 2.4 PB, which is about... Which is 18 seconds per 100 meters. Yeah, so he is blistering fast. And he just averaged a 3.15 for 6k on the road. Mad stuff. A few long shots um, to win would be Coach Jackie of Lactic Butts um, here in lane 5. Nathan of Oldham, who's also a, train a fellow training partner of mine in lane 4. And also um, Aldrich Go from SIM in lane 11. Yeah, a very, very stacked heat overall. If Haja were his best, no one would have a shot at beating him. But at the moment, I'll put my money on John Lim because he's the man with the most momentum going into this championship. Yeah. So as stacked as Heat 1 is, Heat 2 could be even tougher to call. We have Timothy Liao, a former silver medalist um, at the National School's 5K a few years ago. Ruben Noganathan, who as I mentioned, has multiple National School's medals to his name, is there as well. And again, we have the Gurkha, Pravin. Um, I'd say it's between these three, but I will give Pravin the edge because he does have a 4.14 best from April. That being said, I wouldn't be surprised if a Dark Horse won this, as it is op as open as the first heat. So the final event preview that I'll be doing is the 5k. Two heats, with the faster heat being the first as per usual. To be honest, I don't know how fast this field will be because of the time that the 5k will be happening. It's happening at 9, but track temperatures would probably be rather high. Regardless, let's just jump right in. So, on to heat number one. Here, there are five who stand out. Um, Dexter, Ben, uh, Arif, Daniel, and Nicholas. These are all the 16-minute runners. Um, the fastest in the field is Ahmad Arif, who ran 16.01 at this year's Singapore Open. He's right here in lane 9. Um, quite a few sub-1640 runners here, which would have been useful in my journey to run 1640. Ah, well. Um, Seva Sanka in lane 2 here. He just won the Polite Road Race, which was as, uh, road, which was 5k as well. Yeah. And if I'm not wrong, I think he ran 17, low 17s. So look out for him as well. I fully expect um, Ben Ku and Daniel Ananda to be duking it out together with Dexter Tan and Nicholas Rahmadi alongside them. These six uh, men will probably be far and away clear of the field. But the heat will definitely play a part. It could come down to war of attrition, so we'll see how it goes. I won't make any predictions on predictions the time, because really, um, we need to see how the heat is going to affect everybody in the race. Yeah, so right now let's move on to heat 2, which your boy is in, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'll be in lane 6. <laughs> um... Silly mistake, again, I did not put a seat time, therefore I'm not in heat 1. Um, yeah, mistakes were made, I guess. But, not because of that, I'm not very sure how much of a push I'll get. So it is what it is. We make do with what we've got. At the moment, the only, the only name that catches my eye, or the only name that I would be concerned about is Timothy Liao because like I said, he's a former silver medalist at national schools at this very distance but I don't know his condition at the moment. His brother Dominic told me that um, he was away at Sydney over in Sydney for the past few weeks so I'm not sure but regardless, I'm still gonna you know, do my thing carry out my race plan as per instructed from coach 
And if I do that, I should be the one to win. A very, very big if though. Now, on to the review of a shoe that has been essential in the lead up to my race. The New Balance Fuel Cell 5280. This shoe was New Balance's first attempt at a carbon plated shoe and it was built to run the fastest mile on the road. Let's go. At first glance, the shape of the sole catches the eye because it is curved and flares out wide on the lateral. According to New Balance, this is done to smoothen the landing of runners as most elites land on the outer edges of their foot, roll flat, then toe off. The midsole is made of New Balance's first generation of fuel cell, which, like other foams from other brands like the Nike Zoom X and Light Track Pro foam from Adidas, is understandably lightweight and bouncy. The cushioning isn't minimal, but there still is a ground feel when you run. The objective of the foam is to dampen shock, which is why it feels extremely soft on landing, yet still helps to propel you forward. There is a bump on the midfoot that makes contact with the ground first, and it forces the runner to stay on their forefoot. However, the most significant feature of this shoe, and almost every other super shoe, is the full-length carbon fibre plate. You can feel the stiffness of the plate through the shoe, which for a non-track spike, is unique. The carbon plate creates a stiff lever to help runners generate more power, but also helps them to land smoothly. One of the first things that caught my attention when putting the shoe on was its weight. It was very light, almost like the street fly. The shoe is designed like a track spike, in that it wraps around your foot well, so for those with white feet, I would recommend going half a size up. I realised how tight the fit of the shoe was as I squeezed into the shoe. To be fair, I am usually a US 9 and here I was trying to squeeze into a US 8.5 men's and trying to make it work. I had to go sockless to fit the shoe, but I managed it. The shoe felt unstable when I tried to walk or even stand in them because of the midsole's odd shape. But once I started jogging and running, my legs immediately started popping off the ground and it felt very very smooth to run in. Here is a clip of me doing a 300m at 1500m pace as part of my race tune-up with the 5280. I used this shoe to run most of my track intervals, both short and long, in the lead-up to my 5k race. The grip on the track due to the unique outsole allows me to run at high speeds without worry. The responsiveness is as advertised, the midfoot bump forces me to stay on my forefoot, and the carbon plate allows me to generate more power to roll along around the track at speed. This is what allows me to still be able to get high speed workouts in even though the 5280 is not a spike shoe. New Balance really wasn't lying when they said that the shoe was meant for sub 530 milers. The faster you go, the better the shoes feel. The cushion is sufficient enough that my feet feel okay when doing one case or even mile repeats, but any longer and the soles of my feet would start hurting. Given the specificity of the shoe, I would advise against using the shoes for anything more than intervals. There simply isn't enough cushion for anything more. For tempos and fast long runs, I'd use the New Balance Super Comp Elite version 3. Now that's a review for another day. So, that's it for this rather long episode. If you liked it, you know the drill. Like and subscribe and maybe drop me a follow on my socials too. On the next and final episode, I will be reviewing my 5k race and possibly include a review of the middle distance events at the championships too. I will also be sharing with you all on some future races that I'm targeting. So I'll see you all soon. Peace folks. What's up guys, just finished my 70 minute long run. Ah, tired bro. Mad thing.